art can change our future. Travel with me, artist John Dyer and artist Joanne Short. Be inspired by endangered environments, plants and animals, and learn about tribal culture. Paint, connect, exhibit and change. It's a last chance to paint. Welcome to day six of Last Chance to Paint and our Precious Africa chapter. I just wanted to show you these amazing dust devils where the land heats up and creates these almost like tornado-like forces. Now this also creates a lot of wind, so apologies for the wind noise in some of the footage that you're going to see in this film. So we found some beautiful flamingos on this lake that Joe's filming for you now. We'll catch that now so you can see them on screen. So fun fact, that flamingos get their colour from the food that they eat and they filter that through their beaks. I'm going to show you one of my paintings from pretty much start to finish. I've already got the background down because you've seen that. This is a sunset scene with flamingos and elephants and you can see how I put this paint on. This is twice, this has been filmed at twice my actual speed to speed it up for you. So once I've got that background down I choose my colours and then using the colour paint here, I'm doing an elephant, I'm just sketching it out, the outline of the elephant. Did you notice in my left hand I've got a field guide? Field guides are essential for a bit of reference. You are going to need reference to paint animals. So I'm just establishing the trunk of the elephant there, and then I'm going to move into the body and then the front legs, the underbelly and the back legs. And once I've got that, I will just block in with colour. Simple as that. Remember this is twice my normal speed because we speeded the film up. Here's another elephant, I'm putting on the back leg of that and then I'm putting on some highlights where the light might be catching it. Here's a flamingo, same thing, sketch out the outline of the bird and then block them in. Darker flamingos look like they're further back in the scene and smaller flamingos look like they're way back. So paint some real little silhouettes of flamingos in the sky and it gives your brain the kind of confusion, the illusion of distance. Here comes some elephant grass and I'm choosing nice blue colours. They complement the orange perfectly. And then I'm realising that my sun needs to brighten up with some lovely lemon yellow. So I'm putting in blobs of that and then making sure they reflect in the water. Just really simple brush strokes and it's really effective. And then of course the water's all glistening with the light. So little dots of cream and white will make that shine. And the grass will pick up on the sunlight. So I'm putting in some very thin lines on the edge. And then I'm just with a few dobs of pink establishing the feathers on the flamingos. Same with the ears on the elephant and a bit more light on their back. Then I'm putting reflections of the elephant in. And then finally, I always sign my paintings. You don't need to do this. And again, this is twice my normal speed of painting. And there we have it. So I've just finished my painting of the elephants and flamingos in the African sunset. And I hope this might inspire lots of paintings around the world and for teachers to take the time to send them into our world gallery. It's really important that we all bear witness to what we risk losing. And there are a few top tips on our front page of lastchancetopaint.com of things that you can do personally to reduce your impact. But additional steps you could do even at your school or your home is to increase biodiversity locally. So if you've got a garden, leave some of it a bit messy. Let the weeds grow. Not everywhere, but you know, in places. Insects love it. Leave the grass a little bit longer. Maybe have a patch that's completely wild. Um, plant a tree if you can. Just bring nature back into your life, it will enrich your life and it will enrich our planet. So behind the glass, you've got Jo here, who's busily working on the blog for today. So she's doing this all day long as well as filming and, and doing all the sound and basically everything that I'm not doing. And if you watched uh, yesterday's video, you'll see all I did was paint. So she's really busy. How are you doing it, Jo, today? How are you doing the blog? Well, just to start with, just to let you know that it's just as difficult and I'm just as busy as John. So today I've discovered a new way of doing things. I've discovered that if I speak into my iPad, it writes it for me, which is making things so much easier. But I suppose it is more comfortable here sitting in the guest house garden. And it, it makes, if there's other people wandering about, I don't think they'd like to hear me talking into my iPad. And what's the other way you're using the iPad? Um, I've started draw, I've started writing proper 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 handwriting and if I write into the onto the screen it turns it into type which is really interesting. Oh.
A big thank you to Winterbourne Junior Girls in Thornton Heath who've written in to tell us that they'll be following our journey and hopefully creating some wonderful paintings for our World Gallery really soon. Thank you so much and we can't wait to see them. We've also answered lots more questions in today's blog so do check that out and see if your school gets a mention. We set off into the evening sunset and found all sorts of animals that we hadn't already seen. Look! So next next fun fact, we've got wildebeest and again we're going to cut so you can see these really close up and Joe is filming this for you. Look at the sun, the sun is just amazing, this big African sun. Here's a fun fact, or maybe not quite so fun, when a wildebeest gives birth to their, their baby wildebeest, um, the placenta then comes out afterwards and uh, when that lands on the ground but with the grass, if uh, cows come along and graze that grass, the cows die, it's very poisonous. But apart from that, wildebeests are harmless, they're ruminants, and they're part of the natural ecosystem of Africa, and they're a fantastic looking animal. Perhaps you might like to paint or draw wildebeest for last chance to paint and send it into our world gallery. We just really want you all to connect to the ecosystem of Africa, learn to love it, respect it, and to tell all your friends and family about how we can all be changed. of this hippo which we're going to show you now. Joe's having a look through the camera to get a really close up view of this wonderful animal. So a great fun fact about the hippo is it's so bulbous and it just looks so sluggish but it will go up to 30 kilometers in a night on its hunt for food. So the landscape we're showing you now has got obviously a lot of very dead trees in it and the question is that I asked why are these trees dead? Now these are dead because of elephant damage apparently and it just shows what can happen when nature gets out of balance. Too many elephants because they can't roam, they're, they're fenced in, there's too many roads, and uh, then the trees die because the elephants push them because they need the food, and then the giraffes run off, it's no food for them. And So this is what we need to be careful of on our planet, if we don't end up um, with areas like this all over the place. This is just a little patch, so this is no big deal, but it's just an indication of when nature goes out of balance, it can all go wrong. Joe's got a fun fact about giraffes, I'll tell you when she tells me. So yeah. then that's quite dangerous. Mm. They have very sharp teeth. They're really dangerous, you don't want to go anywhere near one of these things. Just seeing if you can hear it on my mic. 